Greetings to everyone. Welcome to a new video from Back to Gaspire. Today I want to explain how to go from a photograph to a relief. For the purpose of mechanizing, keep in mind that this is not modeling a face but simply creating a 3D relief from a photograph. This can be achieved with a not so deep relief depth because many people have consulted me and we're going to do some tests. Here we have the file and this is the photo which I'm going to work with. The idea is that the door has very good quality, this means it has very good pixels quality and is not blurred. This way it gives us a good quality. The first thing to do is to open a new file in Vector Aspire. We configure some measures depending on the value we have of the material in which we're going to make it. If it is either wood or acrylic, etc. Well, here I simply set the dimensions of the material and here I'm going to locate where my workpiece is and then I click on OK. Generally, when importing images to the Aspire, I do it by clicking on Import and then Import Bitmap. This is to be able to extract some vectors and do some work, but in this case we're going to do it by another port so that the 3D relief is not generated and we simply go to Modeling. In this section we find several tools for the 3D modeling. Remember, we're not going to make the model, we're simply going to extract that relief from the photograph. For that, here we can see two birds, one that appears in a grayscale and another one in color. Let's click on it, and here we see that the window asks for several photos, an image file. In this case, I go to the desktop and I have this image, which is the one I'm going to work with. I click on Open. Well, here I have the image and I double click on it and I start to increase it to the size that I require. In this case it is fine, now I want to center it. I just get straight here on the box that says Align Selected Objects and I go to the central part. In the whole section of the model of the workpiece, I click on Closed and basically when getting to the 3D View tab, we immediately observe that we already have a relief that does not have much height. The quality of this relief depends exactly on the quality of the photograph we are working with. To this image, we're going to make some kind of arrangement. I will try to smooth some areas. For that, I'm going to place it here again in top view. And that activates a window that says Sculpt Visible Model. When you click on Sculpt, several strategies appear, among them Smooth, Then we have Depose It and another one that says uh, is Remove etc. But in this case we are only going to work on the Smooth tool. We see that it has a kind of brush. In this area I'm going to control the diameter. In this other section we're going to set the strength. And in this other part we're controlling the smoothness. Let's see how it works. I start by choosing any area that I require. Here you can see how the smoothing starts to be performed. We must pay lots of attention because if in some area where I have some details, for example in the eyes, there is a very high strength and smoothness. Uh, what I'm going to do is practically do the erasing of that area. Fortunately, with Ctrl Z I can redo and keep adjusting the parameters. I think that it could display a 23% strength and a 47% smoothness and the diameter is going to depend on which area we're going to smooth. For example, here we're going to work in the face section. I'm going to level up the diameter a little bit more where I start to soften and try to have a little bit of cleaner texture without so many particles. This way uh, we smooth it out a lot easier. We can also spot the change without the need of erasing some details.
in the neck area I could add a little bit more strength in order to erase, let's say some details that the photograph gave us to improve them. I think we are doing well there. I'm gonna work here to change a little more strength to give it some more smoothness. I'm also going to increase the diameter and then the gradient of the dress. This depends mainly on the, what we want and how much we are going to go back. We are also going to add a little bit more strength and smoothness. Anyway, this is something that works on step by step according to the results that each one of you wants to get. I'm gonna do it in a fast way and uh, each one will decide how much smoothness is about to administer and also how much you wanna keep the quality of the model. I can see there that this model as it is could start to work to keep it, I will click on the Keep button and then I will give the OK option. We can see that it starts calculating and then we go to the 3D machining section. As we have seen in the beginning, we can spot the reliefs not very high, which can be machined by not working with roughing tools. This logically will depend on what type of material I'm going to work with. I'm about to work with either wood or acrylic. I think that if the finishing tool has a cap depth, we can send it without any kind of roughing. On my YouTube channel, I have a video about that. I'm gonna place it in the top corner so that you guys can watch it. In the upper part, we're going to see the tool paths option again, and I'm going to directly finish the strategy. Here we go back to set the origin of the software, but here it says gap above model in the model position material section of the top. In many cases, our material is not totally flat and sometimes we will have some flaws where we start working and there are areas where the tool doesn't make contact with the material so that the material itself remains virgin. It usually happens in areas with very high reliefs where the nose is a little flat. To avoid that, we can make the tool enter the material the distance that depends on how flat the material is. In this case, I will set a millimeter uh, by doing this, I guarantee that the tool will touch all the material from scratch to finish, then I click on the OK button. In this part, we are going to look at the tool thing to choose the Edit option. I usually work with conical tools. In the video, I will leave you the description where I give a much more specific explanations since I am not going to explain detail by detail as I have already done it in several previous videos. I am simply going to set the stopover. The finer it is, the better quality the relief will have, and here are some RPM of the spindle speed, the feed rate, and the plunge rate. I'm going to leave it as it is here. Then here we can see the model boundary or the material boundary. I think the model boundary is a more suitable choice so that the tool doesn't touch these areas where the material has no relief. I will click on Calculate. Subsequently, we're going to make the simulation. I'm going to speed up a little bit. Uh, if maybe someone of you does not know how to make the simulation, uh, when we are in the screenshot, we're going to click on Preview Toolpaths. We spot these options and then we click on Play so it can be seen how the tool generates the 3D model and through this we know how it is going to be printed directly in the material. When the finishing strategy is ready, the rest will depend on whether you have the right tool or not, or if you need a roughing strategy. Uh, so in this way the strategy itself is ready to be deployed to the machine and finally we generate the G-code. Well, this is all I have to share with you today. I hope it is overall useful. Soon I will upload new content and remember if you like the video and all the information I am allowing to the channel, so you are fully invited to subscribe and like to help this community grow. See you soon!